Darren Lake Garda for round three of the 1996 Audi Laser 5000 Euro Cup. It's an annual date on the Laser 5000 calendar and a regatta all of the sailors look forward to with a casual and relaxed atmosphere ashore. In the morning it's calm, but soon after lunch things start to change. A working breeze that you can set your watch by comes in after lunch. The fleet has come here from La Grande Motte in France, via Amsterdam and on to Lake Garda in Italy. Numbers are up to 54 boats. More countries, Britain, Holland, Germany, France, Austria, Switzerland and even the Czech Republic. We join the racing on the second half of the 11 race schedule. There are some new faces at the front. Andy Rice has crewed a 5,000, but it's his first season at the helm. I used to helm a long time ago, and I was really desperate to get back in and see if I could actually helm these boats. So how has it gone? Well, I spent the time from Christmas until February falling in and generally uh, learning how to sail the boats on a fairly basic level. And then once you get your coordination together, then you can start working on your speed a bit more. And um, you just the better you get, the, the smaller the refinements get, and um, obviously the, the less there is to achieve. But um, it's just finding those little extra details that are making the difference now. With five sailed, Rice is lying third, but regular crew Steve Kiffin couldn't make it. Johnny Mears took the plunge. To be honest, we were still having problems while we were practicing out here. We were getting wet and a few cap sizes, but uh, yesterday it all just came together and we were really pleased. Rice and Mears still third overall after nine and with two to sail. But up at the top of the leaderboard, Chris Burr and Dave McNamara are having a storming regatta. They won races six and eight and lead with two to sail. We just seem to be going a bit quicker than everyone around us and going the right way. And once you start doing that, really, people start just dropping out the back. It's, um, it's quite a nice day. It doesn't happen very often. The wind gods were smiling. Behind them in second, Andy and Ian Budgin have had a few problems on Kemmering. Winners in Amsterdam and lying third overall coming to Garda, they haven't had an easy first half of the regatta. It wasn't the best of days for us today. Um, the first race, we weren't looking too bad until, unfortunately, having the mic on board, I managed to get the tail extension through the mic during a jibe. Just pulled the tail extension completely out, end of the mic, and end of us nearly. Well, they got that one back together and finished seventh, but their problems weren't over. Lying second overall, they fluffed attack. I hadn't quite got the clip probably onto my heart and the clip falls off. I fall out of the ball with the with the main sheet in one hand and the tiller, the tiller extension in the other and I bent the tiller extension 90 degrees, which is, you know. So I eventually got it back up, just about got it back up. Ian got the right side of the board at the right time, we got it back up. We went down the first of the reaches and I had this tiller extension and it was 90 degrees. And what did you do with it? We had to do another lap. So I put it back over my knee and I bent it another 90 degrees, so we had it 90 degrees, it was going up 90 degrees, 90 degrees, and uh, we'd actually lost, I think we lost four places during that little escapade. But if the budgeons are finding it hard, Eurocup leader Paul Brotherton is having a more difficult time. After five races, he was down to fifth overall, and he'd made no headway after capsizing in race six. He got tangled up in race nine and finished 27th. He's not his normal self, less ebullient and uncharacteristically subdued. We had uh, a bad first day here, which was due to quite a few things. Neither Tim or I were on the best of, uh, in the best of health, and uh, you, you can't sail the boat well when you, uh, you're not physically up to it. But uh, we're getting back into shape, and um, you know we're going to try and uh, do what we can for the rest of this series in Lake Garda, and then hopefully uh, still be in there at the final show in Falcon Sea and uh, Hailing Island. Join the action just before the start of race 10. Two races to go. With me out here, Ian Walker, 1996 silver Olympic medalist. Paul Brotherton in the green boat. Gun goes, he's on port, got no right away. He's done it again. He's going to cross the whole fleet, or he's going to try and cross the whole fleet on port. Hovercam on Bolle, they're leading the regatta at the moment. They're well back in the pack after the start. They're going well, breeze about 80 knots. Brunton, he's elected to tag there, but Ian, I think the budget's had a bear away. Yes, Brunton was just ahead of Kemmering, but as soon as he decides to tag, he's got to make sure he doesn't foul them. Looks to me like Budgeon had to alter course, could be a foul against Brunton. That's a very dodgy move, because now Budgeon has the advantage. Oh, Budgeon's having been forced away there. Wind knocking them back, they're being headed. 
Andy looking around, they're going to attack, that's going to be very, very close, they've got no rights of way, they could infringe Brotherton, I'm sure that you can't see, yeah, there are all sorts of bother there. Oh, and Brotherton clearly had to avoid them, that's penalty turns there for the budgets. Brotherton's healing over, he's going to drop the boat, he's going to capsize, no, he just saves it, calls the boat over on top of him. Brotherton's upright, but going slowly, the budgets are going round in circles. Sunworld there, now squeezing Brotherton out of the way. Brotherton's gathered his composure. That incident's left both Brotherton and Budget right at the back of the pack. Homercam, Aquatonic, Richards Brothers, lightweight crew combination, Max Racks, just to the right of their sail is Bolle. They're leading the series overall, and they're going to the far side of the lake. Bolle, Tax. Dave McNamara leaps out of the wire. A lot of the training, these two, as they come across. Still a lot of boats in front of them. Just tucking behind Proctor Masts there. Just see, that's the leader coming across. It's Yuk de Jong. Oh, what's this? Paul Brotherton. And Tim Hancock had dropped it in while he was subdued on the shore earlier. And here come the Budgeons as the leaders blast downwind. The Budgeons are well down the pack. Bolle round the mark now. They're also well back. Just ahead, Bob Smolders casting drop. EMS raised the kite. So Dave McNamara working hard as Bolle just sail out of picture. The rest of the fleet pour in. I can see surf experience, aquatonic, squeezing to try and find a gap in there. Here come the budgets. Almost at the back of the fleet. Never seen that before in a Euro Cup race. But don't write them off in the lead. Dutch domination, Euro, second, UK, Ronston. Third, it's Harvick from Holland. Fourth, EMS from Holland. And fifth, Bolle leading the regatta so far. Tight on Bolle now. Back of the racks. McNamara pumping that Jenica, good view there ahead. Really storming down here, about 18 knots. Oh, and at the mark, that's the Austrian team. It's Sylvia Vogel and Boy Robin, they've dropped it in. Not out of the game, they all oh, come Paul Brotherton. Good recovery, but right at the back though. Oh, and that's a bit of a tired mark rounding as they dip the boat in to windward. They've got to get that Jenica up. Come on, Paul, he's looking tired. He's working oh, that, but can. it's just yeah, not his regatta. Could be his though. Bob Smolders won this regatta last year in four, storming downwind. Bolle, now whilst we were with Brothers and Bolle's pulled up to second, they rolled past Ronston. That's not good news for Norbury. So Bolle second. You can see Yuk de Jong ahead there, and we're with Norbury now. Twitching, steering a bit of an erratic course. Lost one position, worried about losing more. Vince Hater, crew looks back. Steve Norbury looking extremely uncomfortable standing like that. He's going quickly. Bolle jive, but a ragged jive. They're still chasing. Trying to get past Yuk de Jong, who at the moment looks well out on his own as he jibes in the downwind gate. As Yuk de Jong in Europe just go out of picture there on the right, they're in the lead. This is the distance between Ronston and Bolle. And these are the leaders. Yuk de Jong, Bart Luxemburg on Europe. Oh, and it looks like Ronston's lost another place. Bob Smolders, EMS, they're ahead. On board with leaders Euro as they jive and prepare to go to the downwind mark. Chasing hard, Bolle, both twin trapezing, pointing high. Have they misjudged the downwind mark? Going very quick, chasing these guys. Bolle will be pleased with that mark rounding, not good. They're going quick, chance for Bolle to catch up. Yuk de Jong will see this as an opportunity for him. Team Euro to pull away, that's a good lead they've got there. Bolle not yet reached the bottom mark. Bolle comes in the shot. 14.4 seconds behind. Dave McNamara just pushes that boy out of the way. They're focused on Yuk de Jong now. It's a two boat race for the lead at the moment. No one else in the frame. Smolders now in third. Another seven seconds behind. And Ronston, fourth position. Now it should be between those four, but they've got to watch out. The rest of the pack aren't far behind. Euro tack and go across the lake now. Bolle follow. Quickly out on the rack there. Reasonable tap, Bolle leaps out. They've been showing good boat speed all week. And Yuk de Jong tacks. Not quite so fluid. Yeah, both the Dutch guys, Smolders and Yuk de Jong, are tending to sit down out of the tack. I think it's important in these boats to stay on your feet. And here come the Budgeons. They've powered up the fleet. This team being business. Kemmerings not used to being at the back. And they're no longer there now, not far from the leading pack. As we join Yuk de Jong, Bart Luxemburg, Euro, still the leaders. But they're under pressure, they're tacking. 
trying to protect this side, but the Bolle team are catching up. Hovercam on the budget. They've done well here, having been in the 40s at the Wimbledon Mart. They're now back in touch with the leading pack. But this is the race for the lead. Europe are going to cross ahead of Bolle, but Bolle are undoubtedly gaining. Yes, I don't think Chris Burris is in better wind shifts. I just think he and Dave McNamara are sailing faster. They're certainly closing. The Dutch team now have a fight on their hands. As Bolle tacks. Good tack. Both of them quickly out of the wire. Just emphasising just how much faster they are than Europe and Jupp de Jong and Bart Lottenberg. They're coming across now. Now, could this be the time they pull out into the lead? Europe is tacked. Bolle's got no run away, but are they ahead? From here, I'd say Bolle could be passed. Just look how flat they're keeping that boat. Tight on Bolle. Comes across. Oh, he's got a bear away. Dive behind Europe there. Europe's tacked. So this is the race as they come into the mark. Bolle at the moment are going faster. Bolle very much the predator. Europe the prey. Mark 50 metres away to their left. Europe second, but in control at the moment. Bolle's not far enough ahead. If they attack there, they need fringe Europe. They've got to get a clear lead. Little lift there for Europe, looking in a better position. Bolle tries to squeeze round just in front. They're just clear. They're round the mark first. Bolle did it. The athletic Dave McNamara leaps out on trapeze, keeps the boat upright. Chris Burrow raises the Jenica. Europe just behind. The race is on downwind. Burrow was faster upwind. Can Europe go past? Bolle took the bullet and they're leading the regatta with just one race to sail. Europe finished second. With EMS third, this battle for ninth became highly significant. Seiko finishing ahead of Jeff Davison. And that took Andy Rice and Johnny Mears into the last race, tied third. Gun goes. Bolle are currently leading second budgeons, tied for third between Seiko and EMS. Oh, and there is Bolle. That's bad. Stuck in the pack. Dave McNamara looking around, looking for a way out. They've got to do something. They can't just sit there. McNamara looking for a position for clear air. The budgeons come across on port. No right away. Diving behind the stern of Seiko. Great view that of the budgets sailing at the front of the racks. Ian looking around, thinking about the best way up to the top mark. As Bolle come across from right to left. Behind the Italian Gialdini. Behind Oxbow. Going fast. Gialdini looks like he was tacking there. Back to the budgets. Yes, Richard, this no-discard rule is critical once again. It takes the regatta to the wire. If Borough and McNamara can't get out of this one with more than 50 boats, they could be in trouble. The budgeons only need nine places on them. There's the budgeons, top left. They've tacked, going in for the mark. Oh, and look, Bolle have done tremendously well there. Tacking just inside budgeons. Budgeons have got better speed. They'll probably sail past. Yes, they have. Coming into the top mark now. Budgeons leading. Budgeons go round first. Just squeezing up there. Second is Bolle. In goes McNamara. Getting the Jenica up. Chris Burra staying out on the trapeze. Keeping the boat flat. Oh, that yellow Jenica. That is Bolle. Not a good hoist. As the Budgeons are in the lead. They've got clear air. And they're off. Oh, and Bolle in all sorts of problems. They've just stopped. Rimmer just sails straight past. As we join the leaders, Budgin Brothers, Kemring, Winter Beezing, they found win. Familiar position. Quick look back from Andy, that's what he sees. Budgins are clear ahead. And this is the race for third position overall. Seiko on the left, EMS on the right, both equal points. Something's caught the Budgins' attention, both looking back. This is what they've seen in the middle of the lake there. Bolle has jived early. Often more wind out the middle. Budgeons Jai protecting their position. They don't want Bolly finding different wind. Bit of a scrappy jive that. Ian's hat fell off, taking time to get on the trapeze. Behind, very close between EMS and Seiko. As Bolly Jive go out into the middle of the lake. They'll be pleased about that fight behind. Gives them a chance to try and catch the Budgeons. Budgeons get a gust. Oh, and behind, Seiko has must have jived earlier. They're ahead of EMS. They're in third position. Smolders jives, perhaps he's seen more wind on the right. And Bolle in the middle of the picture jive. There go Bolle behind the budgeons. And here come Bolle, they're very tight behind Rimmer. Oh, that's very dangerous. If they touch Rimmer, that would have been infringement. That's lethal, but they've got away with it. They're in second position. That was a dangerous move, Ian. 
Yes, dangerous, Richard, but very well sailed. If they had so much as brushed rimmer, it would have been a penalty. By the time they'd dropped their spinnaker and done their turns, the Budgeons would have certainly had more than nine places. Budgeons in the lead, Bolle second. If it stayed like this, and remember, there's a long way to go in this race, Bolle would win this regatta and move into the overall lead in the Euro Cup. Budgeons jive. On the lay line now, for the bottom mark. Bolle's jive to follow them in. Budgeons lower the Jenica. Burra quick look behind. Dave McNamara pumping Jenica, getting maximum power. Trying to chase the Budgeons who've now round. Look at that great lead they've got over the rest of the fleet. Burra shoulders the bottom mark. And just behind, there's a real race on here for third position overall. Burra looks back, sees Seika and EMS going to be very, very tight. A real race on for third overall there. Back at the front, Andy and Ian Budget keeping a loose cover on those guys behind. They're clear ahead. Chris Burra doesn't like that sort of loose cover. Tax goes out to the middle of the lake, crosses ahead of Smolders. On board with Burra, playing the main sheet. He's squeezing the boat through the waves. Seiko has tacked, Smolders is carrying on, it's very, very close. Can't tell who's ahead at this stage. Smolders tacks, anything looks like Seiko's ahead. Budgets tacks, still keeping that loose cover on the rest of the fleet. They're well ahead. And they come in now, through the gate, just behind there. Oh, and Seiko's really caught up on Bolle. Bolle tacks just ahead. Seiko, bit more breeze there. This is a real chance for Seiko to take second position. Put Bolle between himself and EMS. Trying to secure third place overall, remember Seiko. Seiko's, got, oh yeah, bit of a lift there. Pointing higher, both spokes, both very similar speeds. Bolle, if anything, is squeezing ahead. On board, 110% concentration. Bolle's pulled ahead. They did it earlier on in that race against Jupp de Jong. Bolle have got to be so careful here, they're under real pressure. But if Bolle make an error, that could lose them the overall lead, it could lose the regatta. They've just got to keep their composure. And that's what the Budgeons will be hoping they don't do. Budgeons going fast, they're good in these conditions. Budgeons tack. Burra fighting to release the main sheet. He's trying to get behind Seiko. Seiko's got in front of him. Oh, and Bolle so nearly went in the side of Seiko then. That would have been the end for Bolle. He'd have lost the regatta in just two seconds there. But Seiko's got through. Seiko in second position. Andy Rice and Johnny Mears. Johnny Mears, great tank. Straight out of the wire. Andy Rice joins him. Richard, look at the far side. It looks like the pack are gaining. That, of course, is the danger of getting involved in attacking duel. Close here, Seiko. Andy Rice, Johnny Mears, just under the boom. You can see Bolle, they're coming across. Difficult at this angle to see who's ahead. Oh, Seiko's tacking. Oh, and Bolle have definitely gained there. Setting very quickly upwind at this regatta of Bolle. Impressively, they've withstood that pressure from Seiko. They've come out on top and they've given themselves a bit of breathing space. Or have they? Bob Smolders has come back into the picture. There's three boats fighting for second position. Seiko just behind Bolle. Smolders has tacked. Not quite so good that tack from Bolle. McNamara quick, Burrow a bit slow. Seiko just to their left, coming in towards the mark now. Seiko pointing higher. That's the budget, it's going downwind in the lead. I can see another boat coming in from the right. Yes, it's Rimmer in second position. He avoided those duels. And in third, Bolle are going to round ahead of Seiko. Haven't got much speed on there. They've almost stopped at the mark. Seiko very close behind. Oh, and who's this? Walter Urs from Germany. Sails straight past Seiko. EMS was just rounding the mark. I saw there behind Seiko. Race very much on for third position. Oh, and look at this. EMS is going past Seiko. EMS back into third position in this race. Back into third overall. Ahead, Urs, Bolle, Rimmer and Kemmering in the lead. This is turning out to be quite a race. Seiko gets a gust. Powers up on EMS. Bolle goes into the jive, trying to jive inside Rimmer, get the inside track, catch up and regain second position. Hurst jiving behind, Seiko jiving, and EMS carrying on. Jiving late, did it last time. Thinks there's more wind down that side, perhaps. 
Baggins have found it. So smolders. Seiko out in the middle of the lake. Bolle jibes. It looks like people are jibing all over the place, Richard. But downwind, it's all about what the sailors call pressure. The wind here is very patchy. And if you can sail into a few more knots of wind, your boat speed jets up. Tight on Seiko, chasing Bolle. Both found wind, both going fast. Remember, EMS went out to the middle of the lake. Seiko jibed. Bolle have jibed ahead. EMS is in the middle, they'll be crossing. Will they cross ahead of Seiko? It's going to be very, very close. Fudgins rounds the bottom mark. Clear ahead. They'll just. Oh, look, EMS has lost ground there. Towards the end of the final upwind leg, the positions were still the same. Very, very close between Seiko and EMS. Smolders tax. Oh, he's stuck under the boot. He's dropped it. He's in. Surely that's third position for Seiko. Bolder struggles to get the boat upright, leaps over the boat. Bolle looks back. Budgins storm off downwind towards the finish. And if Bolle can keep that boat upright, if nothing goes wrong, they've got this regatta in the bag. And if Seiko can do the same, third position overall for them. Johnny Mears hoists the kite, Andy Rice standing up Beautiful. in the boat. Bit less breeze there, a bit more here. Budgins jive, nice jive. Clear lead, really can't see anything going wrong for these two now. But the hearts must be pounding on this boat. They're just seconds away from a Euro Cup victory. They've got to keep the boat upright. They can't make a mistake. Nice jive. The implied pressure here is enormous. Bolle have never won a Euro Cup regatta. They've so often won races. They're always up there, but to win a Garda, for many sailors, this is the regatta they want to win. And for Bolle, it's just a few hundred metres in it. Budget celebrating before they cross the finish. They've won the race, they've done all they can in this one. But this regatta belongs to Bolle. Chris Barra, Dave McNamara, they've won. They're not smiling yet, they're still shell shocked. As Seiko crosses the line in third position, they take third position overall. And relief for Bolle, they've done it. There you go, David. <laughs> Golden, you can look back at it with a retrospectoscope and say, oh, that was easy. But anything could have happened until the last race. It's, you were under quite a lot of pressure to just hang in there and not make mistakes. We were sort of expecting the mast to fall down or the rudder to fall off or something yeah. at the last minute as we were going sort of 20 yards from the line. You're like, well, just hold on, please, just stay up there, stay up there, just two minutes more. A great victory for Bolle, second Kemring. Superb performance from the new boys in Seiko. The Euro Cup leader, Paul Brotherton and Tim Hancock in Oxbow, finished sixth. And that brings Bolle to the top of the leaderboard, ahead of Oxbow, Kemring in third, Seiko fourth, EMS 5th and Europe 6th. Join us next week to see if Barra and McNamara can maintain their form. The Budgins can find just a little bit more. Or perhaps Paul Brotherton rally from Garda Horror Story. The Seiko boat, they can still do it, the new boys are going fast. But you can never ride off Bob Smolders and Carson Grubb.